Hello everyone, my name is Cyber Prime, and today I am here to answer the question that's probably been on all of your minds when you stumbled upon this channel. What exactly is the Fire Team of Fools? Well, Guardians, sit back, relax, and prepare to take some notes. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm just kidding. But prepare to relax anyway, and understand an abridged explanation of Destiny 2, the Fire Team of Fools. Right, real quick as we begin, if you do enjoy this or find it somewhat helpful, let me know by commenting, liking, and or subscribing. And now, let us explore and understand the universe of the Fire Team of Fools, which we like to call the Fooliverse. So, a general rule of thumb when watching is that the order of the actual release of the missions and activities in the game will correspond and match their place and order in the timeline of the Fire Team of Fools. Hopefully that helps, broadly. First, before we break down the main story beats for the Fire Team of Fools, let's do this chronologically and begin at the beginning with Destiny 1, the prequel series. The First Fools, which follows the initial fools, Cyber and David, in their first adventures as Guardians before the Red War. David was the first of the two to be resurrected for the first time. He was a primarily void-wielding warlock who always wanted to be a hunter instead. He lacked the motivation to really be a guardian and instead wanted to do his own thing in life. But deep down, he did want to help people under that gruff, angry exterior. All he needed was something or someone to give him a push. And in these early days, David began to wander about and travel in order to find himself, as he really didn't care much for his duty as a guardian, considering it all to be grunt work and beneath him. He had a little bit of a rough start, as at some point before the series begins, he was hit by a crashing fighter jet seemingly from the 2010s. Once his ghost resurrected him, he felt strange, and his life, from here on out, became gradually worse. David was battling demons, you see. And it turned out, that was literally what was happening. Ever since he allegedly got hit by this crashing plane, he started to hear voices in his head that sounded unnervingly like pre-Golden Age Hollywood actor Harrison Ford. And these thoughts became more and more aggressive, and more and more overpowering, as they sought to take full control of David, and not simply make him more agitated and depressed. This being, this entity, was known as Harris Olgagoth. But on the bright side, one day he stumbled upon an archaeological dig site that he thought was abandoned, and found an ancient relic filled with void energy that he thought looked like a cool sword. So he took it for himself, not realizing that he had just stolen the life's work, the epitome of research, the meaning to another guardian's life. And this guardian is, if nothing else, petty. But you'll hear more about that later. Oh, and David found a chimp, potentially close to his original resurrection point, and took him in as his very untrained pet named Chippy. Chippy would go on to make David's ship faster in dirt, peanuts, and chimp excrement. Now, the main prequel series has begun. Cyber has been resurrected for the first time. Cyber was a very nerdy, endlessly and annoyingly altruistic guardian who had incredibly high social anxiety and lacked any drive or abilities to communicate effectively with the world if it had nothing to do with being a guardian. A purpose he welcomed into his life to give it some direction and meaning for being resurrected instead of anyone else. Cyber was also an incredibly, incredibly rare case, however, as he is the only guardian in existence to be able to swap between guardian classes, meaning at any point he can be a warlock and transform into a titan or a hunter. Warlock is the class that he feels suits him the most, and hunter the least, as for some reason, he finds it harder to stay calm and compassionate when he takes this form. But that doesn't matter. What really matters is that he can't always control this ability, and at this point, Cyber as a new guardian has no idea why he can do this. And this mystery is what fuels his desire to understand everything everything, and read and record everything he encounters, so he can attempt to fill in that gap in his mind where he needs answers that he cannot grasp. 
Now, back to the Cosmodrome and his first resurrection. After this new lice managed to escape the Cosmodrome, he turned up Lace to a Find Me a Fire Team meeting, where new guardians could go in order to find others to join them as a fire team. Since he had missed the meeting, there was no one there for Cyber to meet. But eventually, he stumbled upon David, the grouchy, borderline lowlife, depressed guardian suffering from extreme internalized mental duress and psychological deterioration. As he was trying to steal from a locker belonging to one who there? I'm sure that's not important. The two guardians, while being almost polar opposites of each other, eventually decide to become a fire team. And from this moment on, the fire team of fools was born. Every mission that was possibly available, Cyber would sign up and drag David begrudgingly along. Together they followed the general story of the Destiny 1 campaign and its DLCs. Fighting aliens, purging a physical manifestation of darkness in the Black Garden, killing the soul of a dormant hive god, arresting and subsequently killing a pushover fallen captain who wanted to unify the fallen houses, mostly because David was in love with the Queen of the Awoken. Then she died. As Oryx, the Taken King and father of Crota, the god we killed, appeared into the solar system, Cyber and David went somewhat rogue with the help of Cade 6, a style Cyber was not too happy with, and stormed Oryx's dreadnought, leading to an eventual face-off and victory against the Hive Lord. This victory led into the Taken War, where the Vanguard faced off against the remnants of the Taken army across the solar system, after Oryx was permanently defeated in one of the fire team's raid missions, which were classified missions that suffered casualties and had larger rosters than your average mission. These have been permanently classified, but who knows? Maybe one day they will be declassified and you might get to see those secret fools that were a part of these incredibly dangerous missions. While the Taken were attacking, however, Cyber encountered a new foe of unknown origin who possessed the strange ability to manipulate dreams, create illusions, and control Vex portals to trap guardians in his own personal simulations. This enemy was known only as the Nightmaker, and he had one goal kill David. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't great at his job, and he usually missed David and dragged Cyber along a simulation or nightmare. But the fools were never really taking him seriously and kept on their way. The next major event was Rise of Iron, where the fools aided Lord Saladin in defeating fallen devil splicers, who were using a highly advanced nanotechnology in order to turn themselves into godlike machines. The fools managed to accomplish this task without much trouble, but David's mental state was deteriorating to a dangerous level. He was hearing more voices losing track of time, and generally losing more control of his own thoughts and actions every day. Cyber eventually convinced him to take a mental health meditation medical leave from the tower, and David reluctantly agreed, but did know deep down that it would help him if he tried. Before he could leave, however, there were some more stories left to wrap up. The Nightmaker returned once more and we finally fully understood that he was the archaeologist who David unknowingly stole from. And since that day, he dedicated his entire life to researching the other legends surrounding that blade. Oh, and more importantly, he dedicated his every waking moment otherwise to destroying David and claiming his rightful revenge. At the end of this yet again unsuccessful simulated reality that the Nightmaker forged and lured the fools into to kill them, he accidentally fell into a portal of his own making that warped him into a simulated reality at the dawn of time within his simulation. Lost. Forever. And finally, just as David is about to leave, and after Cyber said his temporary goodbye to his closest friend, a new light appeared and weaseled his way into their fire team through sheer determination, obliviousness, and his lovable, idiotic, David annoying, yet somewhat endearing personality. This simple titan was known as Turtle Guy. He was not the smartest, nor was he the most powerful. He didn't really understand anything, and he didn't really care enough to try. But what he did care about was love and money. And these two things would be the goal of his life going forward, with Cyber guiding him as close to being lawful good as he could. Turtle Guy's recruitment into the fire team officially ended the first iteration of the fire team of fools, and began the second, comprising of Cyber, David, and Turtle Guy. David then departed, leaving Cyber and Turtle Guy in the tower to continue their missions as the Fire Team of Fools. Now that the prelude has been told, let's dive into the story of the main series that you're here for The Fire Team of Fools.
If you, the viewer, go back and watch the Fire Team of Fools' initial arcs, you'll realize that the episodes are basically just Let's Play videos. This is because we didn't decide to make the series an improvised narrative series until Forsaken. So the events of every mission and activity in the episodes from 1 to 32 are canon, but what we say as players is not. Although you will see the inspiration of certain storylines for the Fireteam of Fools and the Interruptiverse play out here and in the very beginning of Forsaken. So if you hear Turtle Guy ever play another voice trying to reach Cyber on a phone or a radio during the first few episodes of Foolsaken, that is more than likely not canon, but the rest of the episode will be. Just putting that little disclaimer out there. It is a slight bit confusing, but this was we were just we were finding our footing now with that house cleaning done let's go over the story of these first arcs in dugstony 2 also known as the red war the cabal red legion invade the tower and strip the guardians of their light david loses his light out on his wilderness retreat and has to fight to survive but cyber and turtle guy are defeated by gaul and the cabal in a battle and struggle to escape after a long arduous adventure cyber and turtle guy find a shard of the traveler and restore their light and after after sending out distress messages, David manages against all odds to reunite with them after a grueling adventure of his own, and restore his life too. He still hears the whisperings of Harris Olgagoth in his mind, but he pushes on in order to help his friends save the world and keep them safe on this very stupid mission that would likely get them killed. But against all odds again, the fools reunite the vanguard and take back the last city, becoming legends. And it is here that Cyber's live streams of his missions begin to get even more viral than they ever were before. These fools are beginning to become known names around the tower. And a fun piece of little lore trivia, this arc, Dugstony 2, is named after one of the first things that Turtle Guy ever killed when he was resurrected. A spider tank, which he lovingly named Doug before blowing it up. So if you ever hear Turtle Guy reminiscing over someone called Doug, it was a spider tank that he destroyed when he was resurrected. Yeah, strange. Now, the curse of the mummy arc revolved around the fools rescuing Osiris from a simulated labyrinth on Mercury and stopped the Vex from doing weird Vex stuff. That's, that's basically it. Then Mind War was the culmination of David's storyline. The fools rushed to Mars in order to help Anna Bray, a guardian who knows her past as a scientist, defend the war mind Rasputin from the hive forces awakening from the ice of the Mars polar caps. In this assault, David's mind crumbles to a breaking point, and he realizes that if he doesn't do something soon, he won't be in control of himself anymore, and he will be lost in his own mind. The fools kill another of Oryx's sons, except this one was exiled, and even defeat an exiled worm god who was hiding under the ice. In episode 33, once Rasputin is saved, and the fire team wrap up some more favors for Anna, David can't hold it back anymore, and agrees to Turtle Guy's idea for an exorcism to be performed against Cyber's wishes. Turtle Guy performs what he thinks to be hive magic from briefly glancing over Cyber's documents on the topic, knowing he can't really read and simply looked at the pictures. Turtle Guy continues the ritual as Cyber stands by for technical support, and suddenly, whether it was due to a case of spectral constipation, or maybe David took things into his own hands at the very end. But there was a large Nova bomb-like explosion of void energy that reached levels Cyber had never recorded before or after. As Cyber and Turtle Guy look up, they see that their friend is gone. The two guardians mourn their loss in this tower, with Cyber unintentionally transforming into his hunter form more frequently than usual. They listen to the messages David left for them and go to his hiding spot to say a farewell. But they are suddenly interrupted by another guardian hiding behind some boxes. This guardian claimed to be a mercenary, was dressed in pink, was very sparkly and verifiably insane. This guardian was, of course, Hoover. Somewhat reluctantly, Cyber would accept Hoover onto their fire team in order to help convert him from a ruthless mercenary into a selfless guardian, and to honor the request David made in his recording to find a new fool for him. This is the third iteration of the fire team of fools, being Cyber, Turtle Guy, and Hoover, and it is the longest running iteration across the series as of now. The next arc was known as Foolsaken, and was mostly completely canon and in character, but this was still our kind of 
settling in point. The next arc is where we get properly in character. Fool Saken follows the fire team accompanying Cade to help stop a mass breakout in the prison of elders. Sadly, Cade was killed during this mission, and the fools could do nothing to save him. Cyber, enraged at the murder so soon after David's death, vowed to go against the vanguard and hunt down Aldrin Sov and the scorned barons who killed the hunter. One by one, the fire team tracked down everyone responsible, and when Cyber manages to rein himself in and arrest Aldrin to bring him to justice, Hoover's fingers slipped and he shoots the Prince of the Awoken Dead. In the months after this event, Cyber returns back to his normal, heroic self, although the weight of those lost will always weigh down in his mind. The fools traveled into the Dreaming City to slay a taken wish dragon responsible for placing this location into a strange time loop, and while they were there, they worked with Petrevenge to defend this city and relink communications with the Queen of the Awoken, who turned out to be alive and well this whole time. And also Hoover is in love with her, maybe. He's a bit crazy, so we never really know for sure. Turtle Guy also may or may not have a thing for her. Anyway, moving on, all Forsaken seasons are canon, but most of these missions were cyber alone, as Turtle Guy and Hoover made up excuses to take most of the year off. During a mission into the Shattered Throne, however, Cyber and Hoover meet Rocket Man, a heroic guardian with a fascination for Vex technology, who has become stranded from his own dimension, as he got lost in the Vault of Glass during his universe's fight against Atheon. Cyber lets him know that he will try his best to research into how to get him home. And from this point on, Rocket Man, also known as Toad, fights to defend this last city that is not his own, while looking for a way back to his own universe. The Fire Team of Fools' New Light takes place next. This is the Machinima miniseries revolving around Cyber and an aspiring Guardian being hunted down across the Cosmodrome by a Guardian killer known as Carve. I can't tell you anything else that happens as it is currently ongoing, so check the link down below if you want to watch it for yourselves. Spoopy Keep is an arc based on the fools returning to the moon in order to help Eris Morn investigate nightmares made manifest. This is also, fun fact, where we definitely solidify in canon. 100% everything that happens is canon from this point on, unless explicitly stated otherwise. Oh, and the Vex are invading. But more importantly, the fools fight the hive and discover an ancient darkness pyramid hidden deep below the surface of the moon, all while being accompanied by a nightmare of Cyber's trauma made manifest. A nightmare of David. The fools hunt the nightmares and make their way to the center of the pyramid to recover a relic for Eris, and after completing several other smaller quests, the Nightmare of David is convinced to stop its efforts by the fools, giving Cyber a chance to say the goodbye he never got to before. As the nightmare dissipates, into nothing. For the rest of the year, Cyber saved the world on missions across the seasons of Shadowkeep's year, but again, Turtle Guy and Hoover took as much time off as they possibly could have. At the end of this year, Cyber and Rocket Man returned together for another mission into the Realm of the Nine, where they met a strange new light guardian known as Duck. Duck was an aspiring streamer who was inspired and looked up to and potentially idolized Cyber. He was not the most humble, but he did work well and successfully complete his first ever mission alongside Cyber and Toad. Beyond Bully, the first arc in the beginning of the end of this saga. Things are ramping up from here. The fools are called to Europa by a fugitive Varix. Here they discover a fallen warrior known as Eremis, who wields a new power of darkness known as Stasis, who wishes to unite all of the fallen into her army and seek revenge on the Traveler and humanity. Here, Cyber also reunites with an old ally, the Exo Stranger, who he hasn't seen since the first arc of the first fools. She teaches the fools how to wield stasis, but after communing with the Darkness Pyramid, Cyber becomes more menacing and aggravated. He resorts to violence a lot quicker, and is generally acting like a bully towards Turtle Guy and Hoover, who were trying to make a documentary of the events they were witnessing. However, with the help of his friends, Cyber managed to master stasis and return to his normal self to defeat Aramis, encasing her in stasis. The fools then stuck around Europa to help Varix, but here Cyber met a guardian that would become a member of the Hidden and out on a path of redemption known as Kyberian. Together they hunted down the last major lieutenant of Aramis and brought the remnants of the House of Salvation crumbling down. Then Turtle Guy froze himself 
and gradually broke out of stasis over the course of a few weeks as, well, kind of months really, as Cyber and Hoover defended the last city from Zivu Arath's forces, stopped the Vex from invading the last city, and made an alliance with the Cabal Blue Legion. The Fools also went on a pirate adventure in the Cosmodrome to cheer Hoover up after he was rejected by Mithrax. And here, Cyber was reunited with an old friend. Well, not really a friend, more of an old item, his beloved Galahorn, which he hasn't seen since the Red War. Then, Osiris was revealed to be Savathun since they rescued him from the moon, we think, and the fools had to work with the Awoken to exorcise Savathun's worm. Exorcisms have only gone well in the past, totally. What could possibly go wrong? Savathun was successfully exorcised and freed from her prison, to which she paid her fine by returning Osiris back to us. Which which? We're catching up to the modern day now. Here the fools discover that Mars has returned. And worse, Savathun is in play. She lures the fools into her throne world after they discover an ancient darkness machine capable of reshaping a weapon or item in a manner of different ways. As the fools struggle to survive in the throne world, Savathun tricks Turtle Guy into using hive magic, assuming he would accidentally kill his fire team and himself. Little did she know that Turtle Guy was even dumber than she expected and simply used his magic to mess around and put Hoover in the box. We no longer speak of the horrors of the box. Turtle Guy is determined to sleep with Savathun, but the fools eventually convince him otherwise, and they defeat the Witch Queen right as she warns them of something even more dangerous that is approaching. The Witness. Turtle Guy promises to never use hive magic again, even though he thinks he was quite good at it, and decides that his new goal will be to sleep with the most powerful being in the universe, who he now believes to be the Witness. For the rest of this year, the Fools, mainly Cyber and Hoover, defend the last city from Hive Guardians with the help of the Cabal, stopped Callus from doing evil deeds with the nightmares on his derelict Leviathan with the help of the hidden member Kyberian, the Fools also became pirates. And finally, they helped Anna Bray restore Rasputin to full strength. During this effort, Cyber encountered the enigmatic con artist, who tricked him into helping them access secure files from a Clovis Bray orbital station before disappearing into deep space. And on a more positive note, Cyber found an Exo dog and took it in as his own naming it Archie. On another bad note though, around this time, Turtle Guy and Hoover burned down and destroyed Cyber's apartment in multiple ways, causing him to be evicted. And now the three guardians live as roommates on the helm. And to top it all off, in the final weeks before Aramis geared up to assault Rasputin, Hoover pranked Turtle Guy by locking him into an escape pod from the helm, without clothes or food. Hoover then ejected the escape pod into deep space without a tracker, leaving Turtle Turtle Guy alone for weeks and weeks, existing in a perpetual cycle of starvation, death, and resurrection only to starve to death again. Meanwhile, Cyber and Hoover managed to stop Aramis from destroying the Traveler, as they gave Rasputin enough time to sacrifice himself and deactivate his deadly warsats. And now, Guardians. We have reached the currently ongoing arc of the Fireteam of Fools. Light Fool. Here, the last city is finally being attacked directly by the Witness and its fleet. The Vanguard send Cyber and Hoover to follow Osiris, who has stowed away on a Shadow Legion Cabal ship in order to see where Callus, who is now a disciple of the Witness, is going. On this journey, the two fools discover Neomuna, a hidden Golden Age city on Neptune that is now being attacked by the Shadow Legion. They work with the defenders of this city, known as Cloud Striders, to push back the forces of darkness and stop them from reaching the power source of this city, known as the Veil. As they fight through the city and discover a new darkness ability called Strand that allows the fools to make tangible threads out of the connection between all living things, that is definitely not the force, they find Turtle Guy. This titan has been stranded on Neomuna for weeks, but retold tales of encountering pirates and other dangers as he floated through space alone in the escape pod. Turtle Guy wants to prove his self-sufficiency and is very bitter at Cyber and Hoover for not finding him sooner, and incredibly angry at Hoover for not 
not only putting him in the escape pod, but being promoted to general afterwards. As a full fire team once again, the fools stand against Callus, but inevitably lose, as after they defeat him, and after the Cloud Strider Rohan's sacrifice, Cyber was unable to shoot his own ghost to stop the Witness from using it to form a connection between the Traveler and the Veil. The Witness enters the Traveler, and the fire team of fools lose. Cyber takes the end of the world on his shoulders, believing it is all his fault, and works with the fire team to rescue kidnapped civilians as Turtle Guy and Hoover try to cheer him up. Hoover also realizes that due to him technically shooting Uldren Sov years ago, the Hunter Vanguard Dare may mean that he is the Hunter Vanguard. Cyber is iffy on this and thinks the Vanguard might just be telling Hoover this to keep him under control, but just as things are looking good and Cyber is starting to cheer up once again, Amanda Holiday, an old friend of the fire team, is killed in action as she saved dozens of civilians from being kidnapped by the Shadow Legion. The fools attend the funeral. Cyber feels the weight of yet another loss on his conscience, and he tries to stay steady and not fall any further into the depths of sorrow as he needs the fire team to stick together, now more than ever. Without a fire team, Cyber would have nothing, so he can't give in to his agonies fears and losses. He must stand alongside Turtle Guy and Hoover and prepare for a revenge mission against the Shadow Legion, led by Crow, as the world could end at any moment. The fire team of fools are fighting to protect the people that they can without any way to stop the witness. But who knows, maybe in the future, if they're very, very lucky, they may just find out that while they are alive and while they have their light, not all hope may be lost. And that is where we are today, currently. Thank you all so much for watching and or listening if you stuck this on in the background while you were doing something else, like washing the dishes or something. I appreciate it, and I hope it helps someone. I am in the middle of scripting a very, very comprehensive and detailed timeline that will go across every event I possibly can, down to the minute details and character references, but it will take a very, very long time. So hopefully this serves as a simple to understand recap as we head towards the final arc of the first saga of the fire team of fools the final fool but before you go while i have you here i just want to make a few quick reveals for you all to do with the fooliverse my goal is to make it as easy as possible for new viewers to jump into the fooliverse at every and any point they wish whether they want to watch the series from its semi-canon humble origins want to begin where we properly began a story or simply wish to hop in at a specific arc. I want to make that possible. So, there are four projects that I will be working on for the foreseeable future. Number one, you know already, the very detailed multi-hour Fooliverse lore series is in the works, and I will give you all updates as they develop. Number two, Soon, I am going to create a chronological timeline playlist of the Fireteam of Fools, which will be every episode that is already released, simply added in the correct chronological order, to make it simpler to follow for new viewers. Number three, I will be editing the entire Fooliverse into large, multi-hour bingeable videos for you to easily watch and pick up from wherever you leave off throughout the day. Perfect to have on in the background, or fall asleep to. The first of which will be an arc or two of the prequel series, The First Fools, edited into one long bumper video for you to sit down and watch while eating your favorite dinner or doing something else. Or just, you know, just sit down and focus on. And number four, I would like to announce the development of the Fire Team of Fools Prime. Or the Fire Team of Fools abridged. I haven't so like I haven't settled on a name just yet. This will be a series of videos to explain the overall arcs of the Fire Team of Fools, containing a blend of key episodes without filler and with narration from myself to fill in any extra blanks. These will probably also be on the longer side a little bit, with one or two videos covering an entire arc in the universe. For those of you who want to skip the filler and get a quick refresh on key events from a previous season, I have a few projects I am working on before I begin begin this, but again, I will give updates on my community posts as they develop. These will all take a little while to produce, but I hope to have some of them published or begin publishing by the release of The Final Shape. Thank you all again for your patience and for your support on the series so far. I can't wait to bring you to the end of this saga and into the last arc of this series before our own climactic event 
to wrap up the seemingly loose threads that might be more important than you think. And don't worry, there will be more Fireteam of Fools after the final shape as well. I just, I'm gonna throw that in here now. I'm assuming everyone would assume that anyway, but I have plans, don't worry. I have a lot of plans. I have the entire universe planned out. All of the day-to-day -day or video-to-video -video jokes and dialogue are all completely improvised, but the overall story of the universe I do have written out. Thanks again so much for watching. Apologies if my voice got a bit scratchy towards the end because it's starting to hurt and I don't know if that's just because I'm using it a lot or if I'm getting a cold. So, apologies for that. I hope you have an awesome day. Goodbye. I hope you enjoy the fire team of fools and roll out.